Where did this all-star brawl gameplay footage show up at? Was it on IGN? Let's see if we can get a better understanding of um what the hell is even going on in this game, uh, gameplay-wise, because it seems to have been taking a whole bunch of stuff from Smash and other platform games, and yeah. Uh, slightly interested. Despite the characters having no voices. I'm actually kind of curious to see what the hell that's like. Hey, everybody. My name is Thaddeus Cruz, character designer and programmer on Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl. And today, we're going to be showing off some of the mechanics. This game is a platform. Gak! Meaning that the objective is to read out your opponent. Ringing out an opponent has everything to do with their percentage. Okay. At low percents, they wow. won't go very far at all. Unapologetic. At high percents, they'll go flying. Wow. You won't want to okay. go all out to begin with. You'll need to start out with light attacks. Light attacks are the options you use to build percentage. Interesting like looking gravity. Attacks, they come in pairs of three. By the way, this is also coming out on PC, right? I don't think it was just a Switch only game. I think it's... I think it's going to be on most platforms. So everyone is going to mod in voices on PC. Is what I'm trying to say. Light up, light down, and light mid. Once you've built up enough percent, you can move on to strong attacks. These two come in up, down, mid. Okay. For the most part, these kinds of boobs will be fairly similar across the cast. Where characters really diverge is in their specials. Just as before, they come in three flavors. Mid, up, down. So these B attacks, okay. Into the air as well. All characters have three light attacks in the air, three special attacks in the air, and three strong attacks in the air. In regards to strongs, the direction you choose determines the interaction with other strongs. Down beats mid Wait, what? and causes a stagger. Mid beats up and causes a turnaround. Up beats down and causes a spin out. Whoa, super RPS stuff, okay. The primary exception to the directional system is in the form of dash attacks. Once you build enough speed on the ground, you will see a dashing effect. This indicates that you can perform a dash light or a dash strong. Of note, on hit, these attacks can be canceled into oh. anything. Cool, that's actually pretty dope. In addition to attacks, grabs also fall into this directional system. Or more specifically, <laughs> Yoink. Throws. While like a Patrick just accepts it, he's like, all right. To move around freely. And if you're on the ground, get a jump out. What's more, you can actually grab in the air, even after a double jump. And just like the ground, you could throw in the air. Bam, that's actually kind of sick. Guarding All right, game, chain grabs in the air. That's actually kind of sick. No penalty for holding it down. Instead, the penalties come in the form of being pushed back. If you reach a ledge, you enter teeter. If you're hit again in the space, you can be punished. So there's actually no shield. A guard can right? become more effective by there's just a guard. timing it to the hit, or by holding in the direction of the attack. Proper the parries. Initiates a perfect guard, where you can react immediately. Okay. Actual but parries. You don't need to guard all the time, especially if somebody's coming at you with projectiles. Instead, just hit them right back. The I love it. In this game, follow a leveling system. I love it. Kenny hates it. I love it. Directed, the more powerful they become. Oh my God! And they put they put MVCI shit in this game. I love it. And that's not all. Those grabs from before. You didn't think they were just for players. You can grab Absolutely. projectiles. I At love all it. Sometimes characters have the freedom to turn. Both on the ground and in the air. This turning system can be locked by holding strength. 
Using the left trigger on most controllers, you will put your character into a state where they are incapable of turning at all, both on the ground and in the air. The benefits of not strafing include being able to do all of your aerials in multiple directions. Huh. On the flip side, a benefit of strafing is that you're able to do full retreating attacks without compromising movement whatsoever. Interesting. On That's actually interesting. Movement, there is also air dashes. Air dashes grant no invincibility, but are fully actionable after the fact. You only get one per air time. Wow. However, the downwards air dashes are a lot more unique. They are significantly faster. So you can fast and fall. Are actionable into any attack. This is about to look like competitive virtual on. By utilizing downwards air dashes, you can wave land. And if you can wave land, you can wave dash. And last, but certainly not least, you can't have a platform fighter without taunts. Some definite interesting stuff going on, right? Some definite, like, the, the memes. I get it, right? Yes, I get it. The memes. The memes. But just speaking on, like, a gameplay perspective, it's actually the air dashing is sick, and I think I'm even more interested by locking your character position. Right, because they eventually added that to some characters, the 2D fighters in, uh, or the the traditional fighting game characters in Smash Brothers, where they will always face the opponent usually, right? But just the ability to like control that, right, that you don't have to turn around, that seems pretty dope, right? I kind of, I kind of really like the fact that you can. You can do that. What I also like that is, it isn't just Smash Brothers, right? Where they're like, a, a lot of Smash clone games can kind of get a little afraid to go beyond what Smash is, right? And like try new crazy things. And the game seems pretty okay. Like we're gonna put air dashes in here. We're gonna let you lock character positions. We're gonna let you cancel moves out of stuff. We're gonna let you do all this. It seems like they're, they're, the sky's the limit with this game right now. My only problem is that it looks and sounds hilariously low budget which is in my opinion fine like the game does not need to be the most visually splendorful looking piece of media of all time to be honest what it really needs to do is just fucking play well right just get it to play well it doesn't look amazing and it doesn't sound amazing which is why I'm probably going to be playing the PC version where, where people will absolutely and inevitably mod in character voices from the show and stuff like that. The PC version is going to be the way to go. It's going to have rollback netcode. They already confirmed that. It has rollback netcode. However, did they confirm crossplay? I don't think they did, right? Let's see what the game actually looks like when it's in motion. Romeo versus Nigel Thornberry. Get ready. Three, two, one, roll. Yo, what's with the frame rate? Why, why 30? There we go. Yo, okay. This game looks fun as fuck. It looks kind of bonkers. But man, yeah, is it is it definitely screaming? It, it's it's you know what it's impressing from gameplay alone right now, and the fact that it's a Nickelodeon game. You know the fact that it has so many, so much of that stuff. Yeah, I'm actually really impressed gameplay wise. It doesn't look as uh, potentially gross as it could look. To me, you know what it comes across as? And this isn't a, this isn't a jab at all, right? It comes across as very much like like the same budget as a PlayStation All-Stars game. But they got all these licensing rights, right? Un unlike PlayStation All-Stars, that game had none of the characters that anybody wanted. This game has the characters that you would never expect to be in a fighting game. Right? It's got it's got the things that people would actually want to play as.
which was the biggest downside of PlayStation All-Stars. Yeah, mechanically, it also looks way better, right? I think, I think it actually looks pretty damn fun. I want to see four-player battles, damn it. Can you play with the GameCube, GameCube controller? There's a very good chance it might not work great on a GameCube controller. There's a chance that it might just work better on other controllers. But who knows? Damn, CatDog actually looks kind of sick. I don't know who uh, Lydia from Beetlejuice is over here. I've never seen her before. Damn, cat dog looks uh, pretty dope, actually. Look at this, look at this cat dog shit. Damn, getting fucked up by cat dog over here. Whoa, whoa, dog got mega buff. Oh my God. This is the cat dog show, all right? Actually, she's animated pretty well. <laughs> I kind of like her run animation. Dang, mega recovery. This comes across as the Marvel vs. Capcom 2 of Smash games, right? We're just gonna throw shit in here. We're just gonna let it hit the fan and let people figure it out, right? Comes across as the Modern Warfare 2 of like Call of Duty games where they're just like, you know what? Just give give players like everything. Just get them, give them whatever the hell they want and let them figure shit out. Just ballistic, you know? Oh my God, you're about to get one stocked by cat dog. The, the, no vo the, the audio being replaced on the PC version eventually by fans will be very nice. That's going to be a very big, very big quality of life thing for this game. <sighs> the music is also... The music is also absolute trash. <laughs> this sounds like some fucking Crash Bandicoot 1 music or some shit like that. All right, I get it. It's like the most generic Nicktoons music ever. It doesn't fit a fighting game. It it isn't it isn't unique. It just sounds very weird. All this stuff is definitely changeable. They're probably very limited what they can do with music and stuff. Interesting. Very interesting. You know what's weird is that I'm on like the highest quality of this video. Damn, 1440p? All right, maybe this one will look better. Maybe, maybe this one will look better. This one, this one is the highest resolution of all of them. Good. Yes, four players. This is what I want. Get ready. Three, two, one. You can fall through platforms, right? Wait a minute, this is an avatar stage. It's like Appa's in the background and shit. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, wow. I'm like, wait, what? Where are we? Okay, this looks good. This looks fun. This actually looks really fun. Getting somewhat more inspired for this game. It's funny how gameplay will do it, right? No matter how pretty your CG trailer is, no matter how uh, crazy your fuck your regular trailer is, right? When you eventually, when you eventually start showing actual gameplay, hmm. Yeah, well, the character, some of the character animations don't look amazing because it obviously is a lower budget game. But the game sh functionally doesn't look really bad. It doesn't look crunchy. It looks like. Who knows, because once you play it, that's one of the most important factors. But I'm actually kind of impressed. We're getting a new, we're getting literally a Nickelodeon Smash game and it doesn't look like complete shit. What I like is that it's not, it is got elements of Smash obviously, but all this air dash stuff is really cool looking. I just need Ren and Stimpy now, right? And I just need to get me Ren and Stimpy or Rocco. That's how it was with Power Rangers? Absolutely. 
Power Rangers ended up being my fighting game of the year when it came out because through gameplay, they were able to they were able to do things that I'm like, dang, I never thought you could do this stuff before. So this this comes across very much like a Power Rangers kind of situation. <laughs> what is Patrick picking up the phone and slamming it down? Crazy April O'Neil suddenly is in everything, you know? There's probably DI in there too, you know? They just didn't talk about it. Damn, that photo thing looks like it covers a lot of space. Of course, SpongeBob is like the best animated character because he's, you know, the hero. He's the damn Shoto. This actually might be the most high profile Smash game that isn't indie. I can't think of any other Smash games that were that didn't start off as like indie development since PlayStation All-Stars. <laughs> if I say I let April demolish Smash Brothers in the very end. Damn, that was ballsy as hell. Holy shit. Chased him the hell down. I'm gonna say that I definitely feel better about the game than I did before. I think all the insane mobility that they're allowing characters to do between like air dashing and focusing on um not letting characters turn around where you can actually control that. I think that's all really cool ideas. Clearly coming from people that are huge Smash fans, right? And want to like sort of disrupt the Smash space in some way. And I think it's pretty obvious that what is the one thing that Smash Brothers has that has set it apart from all the other Smash-like games? It's the fact that it's got Nintendo characters. I think having obviously a Nickelodeon game with all these character rights and everything, even though it's got not great visuals and rough audio and clearly is a lower budget game. It's got those characters and I don't think people give a shit. There's a reason why games like Jump Force can sell well.